thing I've proven that, you know, over the years, day in and day out, regardless of what's going on that's surrounding this team, uh, any talk, anything, I, I still, you know, show that, you know, me being here, coming to work every day, being professional, got to answer you guys' questions every day, got to deal with y'all. <laughs> you know, I still remain positive about that, so uh, I, I don't think I have to prove that to anybody. Sources are telling our Ramona Shelbourne that Carmel will be meeting with Phil Jackson sometime in the next few days to discuss his future with the organization. Stephen A., is it time for Carmelo Anthony to leave the Knicks? It's been time. Um, it's something that I've said to Carmelo on repeated occasions. A matter of fact, uh, we've gotten in repeated discussions about it over the last uh, couple of years or so since Phil Jackson arrived. Uh, he is completely dedicated to being in New York. He does not want to leave. He wants to remain a Nick. He's incredibly loyal to the organization. And to be quite honest with you, I have absolutely positively no idea why that is, Max. It's something that he and I have gotten into heated discussions about to the point where we've gone months without just even talking about it because it just gets him upset when I even bring it up. Uh, but the New York Knicks are an accident that has happened over and over and over again for many, many years. Uh, Phil Jackson has taken this team and it's regressed from the time that Mike Woodson had it and took it to the semifinals of the Eastern Conference against the Indiana Pacers. They are a worse organization and they are a worse team since that particular moment in time. Now, everybody wants to blame James Dolan, who I am no fan of, make that clear. But he does cut the check. He does pay his players. And at the end of the day, you would think that from an organizational standpoint, they would figure out something. But because of Dolan's presence, along with that of cable vision and MSG and the business environment that exists around the basketball environment and how it terms it, it tends to infiltrate things and, 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 and sully things to some degree. It's just not the ideal environment for people to be around. You're Carmelo Anthony. You have been in one conference finals. You have never played in an NBA finals, despite the terrific offensive talent that you are. You're not getting any younger. You damn sure ain't getting any healthier. And I think that now that he's got his money, the priority needs to be positioning himself for capturing a championship. It is not going to happen in New York. It is not going to happen with Phil, who's allowed his ego to get in the way and is so caught up in you doing things his way, as opposed to winning that that has sullied things. I think Car Carmelo Anthony needs to get the hell out of New York quick, fast, and in a hurry. I have said it before. I am saying it again. And I will say this last point. I can't wait until I start my radio show today that will be on 98.7 FM in New York. Because you think I'm going in now. You just wait. I got a whole lot to say about Phil Jackson. In the That's news. 1 p.m. to 3 p.m., right? That's right. Got it. Eastern time, baby. Um, I am not anti-Carmelo Anthony. I'm not. I'm not against Carmelo Anthony. I, I like watching Carmelo play a lot. I uh, always have. I took Syracuse to win the national title uh, the year they won it because of Carmelo Anthony. Because mm -hmm. early on, I was talking about TJ Ford at the time. I remember looking and early in the season going, that guy's the best player in the country. Carmelo is, and he's on a good team. You know, McNamara and those guys, he, they're going to win the title. And they did. I'm pro Carmelo Anthony. But you also have to eventually come to the reality of where these guys fit in. Carmelo has always been an overrated player. That's not to say he's not a great player. You can be great and overrated. The reason he's been overrated is because he's been at best a mediocre defender and usually worse. And because the league changed during his career from an iso ball, hero ball league or more of that kind of a league to a more wide open spread offense for what it's, you know, for lack of a better term, three point shooting league. And Carmelo, it's his style of play. When he wasn't playing at his best was a bit of a ball stopper. When he was, he was commanding so much attention he could find open shooters and he could be valuable that way. But at any rate, was never in LeBron James class, obviously. Was also never as good as Kevin Durant is right now. It's not particularly hard to tell that. And many other players um, who are considered that uppermost elite level players, the way Westbrook and Harden are playing now, uh, Carmelo never played on that level, uh, etc. There are plenty of players like that. Carmelo is a half step below them. So then the question is, how good can he be? Can he be the best player on a championship team? The answer is no, clearly. Can he be the second best player on a championship team? The answer is maybe, but he has to be willing to accept that role. And on the Knicks, even if he were able to accept it, the timing's off because Porzingis is not at this point able to be the best player in a championship team. We'll see if he can be in the years to come. So, so when Carmelo signed that extension, it's like, that's odd. This does not seem to fit very well. Once they drafted Porzingis and found they had something special there, 
at that moment, they needed to move Carmelo for, for young players, draft pickets, picks, etc., to build around Porzingis. The timing does not work for Carmelo. Simply put, he's not good enough to be the best player on a championship team. The timing's wrong for him to be second on this team, even if that could work. I am not against Carmelo Anthony. I wish him luck. But he should have been traded a couple of years ago when he had even more trade value. And if he's still on the raft roster after the trade deadline, that's a miserable failure by the New York Knicks. Well, see, I think that he, my issue with you is, and I shouldn't say that, but my issue with what you're saying is this. It's like I'm looking at Melo and he needs to go. I think there's a bigger problem. I got a bigger problem with the fact that Melo doesn't want to go. See what it, it, if you want to think he truly it, listen, believes that or he's just he has to say that publicly what that he doesn't want to go. Oh, my goodness, Molly. He argued with me about it all the time. We can't even talk about okay. it. He, the so man wants to be in New York. Yep. He, his wife, his kid, I don't know where he's living in L.A. in the That's offseason. That's partly, partly just, what people love wants, about him. He, he has that kind he of He wants feeling. to be there. Yeah. Yeah. And what I'm saying is my biggest issue with him is that he wants to be there. Look, he wanted the no trade clause. Phil Jackson and the Knicks didn't want to give it to him, but they had to give it to him in order to keep him. Fair enough. Phil Jackson, I think, wants him gone. I think he wants to trade Carmelo Anthony. I'm not even knocking him for that. My issue with Phil Jackson is that he hoodwinked the Knicks and he hoodwinked all of us into believing that he was going to position. Remember, why I'm so hard on Phil Jackson, if you are the $12 million man being paid as president of basketball operations, your number one priority, you're talking about building a team over a five to seven year plan. Who the hell can't do that if you got the time? What you're supposed to be doing because you're the 11 time champion is to be able to go out there and recruit marquee dudes to want to come to the city because you're Phil Jackson. He can't even get these guys to sit down with for dinner with him. That's my problem with Phil is with Mel. Hello. My biggest issue is, is that you're, you're getting to a point. Why do you want to stay? Because by wanting to stay for this team, do not tell me, do not insult the intelligence of people who know basketball like myself, like you and going to sit up there and tell us you think this team can win a title. Damn it. You know better if you're mellow. So why do you want to stay? The point is, it's got to become a priority for you to want to win a championship. You got your money, you got your fame, you got your wealth. You're going to be a Hall of Fame as a basketball player because you're a three-time Olympic gold medalist and what have you. You're a national champion on the collegiate level. You're one of the all-time great scorers, and you've never even played in the finals. Get the hell out of New York and go someplace, whether it's with LeBron, whether it's with CP3 or somebody else, and get yourself in position to win a chip. Glad you brought up CP3, because that leads very nicely into what we're about yes, to talk about. Yes, it does. You'll also be on the radio there at 7, 10 a.m. Looking forward to that. Absolutely. All right, the Clippers took care of business last night, beating the Thunder 120-98, to but wasn't all great for Chris Paul, who left the game in the second quarter after jamming his left hand on Russell Westbrook's right leg during the game. Charles Barkley questioned the size of the Clippers' championship window. They got to make a decision on Chris Paul and Blake this summer. If they don't win this year, they're never going to win. Because, you know, that's a big commitment with two guys. One guy is not healthy. He's missed a bunch of games. One guy is, is, is starting on the downside of his career. Do you lock those guys up for the next X amount of years is going to be the big question. I don't do that myself because I'm not paying guys. If they don't win it, you don't, you don't sign them back. I do not. Uh, I, I may sign one, one of them back. I which may, one? Okay, give us which one. I will sign Blake because he's younger. Max? Yeah. Has the Clippers window closed? No, it was never open. It's an illusion. It's a window painted onto a brick wall. And it's nothing against the Clippers. They're an incredibly talented team with a great coach. They even have depth this year. Blake at times has played very well, though sometimes you think, hey, get down in the post, toughen up a little bit. But he's injury prone. CP3, you know, he, he monopolizes the ball too much at times, but... If you talk to a lot of coaches around the NBA and they said, how, and said, at least until recently with the way the league's changed, how should a perfect point guard play? They would point to Chris Paul. It's like perfect point guard play. DeAndre's come such a long way, uh, not to sound uh, condescending or patronizing, but having done radio in L.A. and watched him develop, you feel proud of him as far as he's come uh, uh, on, on defense. And even when he has to be the primary offensive option, the way he cleans up around the glass. But they're just not good enough. In a league with LeBron James and Kyrie Irving and Kevin Love, with, with Steph Curry and Kevin Durant and everybody else and Clay and everybody and Draymond, they're just simply not good enough. And so you got to blow it up. The only way I could say it, and Blake is younger, I agree with, with Charles Barkley, although very injury prone. If you want to move Blake, Stephen A., and you brought up 
Carmelo with CP3. The only thing I could think is you move Blake to see if you can get Carmelo and something to the Clippers as a lure for LeBron James, who can still opt out of his deals every time he signs a deal, he can opt out. If CP3 and Carmelo are both in L.A., maybe that's a lure for LeBron. Otherwise, you got to start moving pieces to rebuild this thing because you will never win a championship with the team as currently constructed. First of all, I would love to see CP3 with somebody like Carmelo who can sit up there and shoot the rock from anywhere and has a legitimate, real, big-time, bona fide point guard. That's number one. Number two, I would, if I had to get rid of one or the other, it would be Blake Griffin, despite the fact that CP3 is four years older at age 31, because CP3, okay, this dude, is, do you realize, Max, I looked at his resume? Do you realize that CP3, you talk about James Harden MVP, Kevin Russell Westbrook MVP, we all know how phenomenal they are. They're the two leading candidates for league MVP, both of them averaging over five turnovers a game. Do you realize that CP3 in all his years in the NBA has only had one season where he's had three turnovers a game? What? That's it. The dude with the That's ball incredible. in his hand. I mean, do you, do you yeah, understand really how great of an orchestrator this dude is? Not to mention he's a pit bull. Not to mention he's got heart. Not to mention he's a leader personified. The intangibles that he brings to the table cannot be measured. There is no way in hell. The only reason I would trade CP3 before I traded Blake Griffin is because I think I could get more for CP3 than for Blake Griffin. It, but just straight up in terms of who needs to stay and who needs to go for my team, I got an argument I'm for that. holding up. Now, Blake Griffin, yeah, the injuries and all of that stuff, the dude's always hurt, which frustrates the, the team a lot. But also, the intangible is missing from this guy. Blake Griffin is a star talent. But he is a star who should be a superstar if he had this right here. And I'm not accusing him of being scared or anything like that. I'm talking about a dude that he's on the court and you can see he wants it bad. I agree and with if that. If Blake Griffin had that, oh my God. I agree but with that, but I want to get back to CP3. He does I want to get back to CP3 for a second. He gives us all the sense that that's a championship player. Mm -hmm. He gives us all the, everyone who watches CP3 says, yup, I want that guy. That's the leader of the team. That's the guy who should be on the Redeem team. That's the guy who should play with LeBron and all these guys, right? That's the guy you want. And yet, he's been on a lot of talented teams. Has never gotten very far in the playoffs. Not fair. Wait, Not wait, wait. wait. Fair. Oh, Not fair. But, Go ahead. But you talk about the intangibles, right. and I agree. He has that sense about him. But the tangibles, in spite of playing on these talented teams, but, they don't tend to advance. Let's be clear. Let's be clear. CP3, everybody has their game. CP3 is not 6'3 and lanky. He's a, he's a miniature pit bull. Sure. He's six feet, stocky, not scared of anything, can put up buckets, but his primary issue, his primary uh, intent is to distribute the basketball, run the show, be an orchestrator. You have to have the requisite parts around him. And what I'm saying to you is that a Steph Curry who can explode, a Russell Westbrook who can explode. I get you. He's not enough to get to a conference the, the, finals the, the, one time. Let, let me tell you this much. When they lost to Houston, when they got blown out, outscored like 49-9 to right. nine in that game six, I understand that. But what I'm saying to you is this. Did you find yourself asking for Chris Paul to stop the bleeding or Blake Griffin? Chris Paul. I, I'm Blake Griffin. See, that's what I'm saying. You 6'10 and a scorer and, 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 and you know, you, you a Skywalker and suddenly you're grounded like, you, like the engine yes. went out. But, and what I'm, no, but what I'm saying, no, what I'm saying no, is Chris no, Paul no. gives you the right feeling but maybe because you've heard the same thing that everyone like in terms of the locker room stuff there's the younger guys which includes Blake and DeAndre and there's Chris Paul would you say they're in the same camp or different camps listen I get where you're coming from what I'm saying to you is that you are a point guard what your skill set is it is if the requisite parts are not around you, they're not around you. But especially when they're around you, you're supposed to step up. Blake Griffin has right. got to step up you in that situation. You want a Frankenstein, guys, Chris Paul's heart into Blake Griffin? Fine, but you can't. We got to move on. We will discuss Houston, though, with our next guest. Coming up after the break, he needs no introduction. Matthew McConaughey will join the show. Hey, hey. Stephen A. will grill him on what happened to his Redskins. We'll get on his other squads as well. <laughs> Stay tuned.